everybody, this is Diana from So Very Crafty, and we are here today to make this beginner zipper pouch with the zipper in the front. This is a super simple beginner sewing project like most of our projects here on So Very Crafty, and it takes about 10 minutes to make, even for a beginner. It has French seams, so don't be intimidated because I'm going to show you exactly how to do them. Super, super simple. I hope you enjoy this project today. I've used some of my favorite Ireland fabric, so this was going on my trip to Ireland this year, um, along with my other Ireland projects that I've made. And if you want to see more of them, head over to the website at www.soberrycrafty.com and you can see my overnight bag and some other zipper pouches that I plan on taking on my trip. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this project because it's a fun and simple project to make. If you do, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, ding that bell for notifications, and share this video with anybody that you think may want to have one of these zipper pouches with the zipper in the front and some French seams. So with that in mind, let's get started on how to make this project. So what do we need? We just need some fabric and a zipper. I have a 12 inch continuous zipper. Now you can use just a regular zipper for this. Make sure it's a little bit longer. Uh, I use 12 inches here, so you could use a 12 or 13 inch or 14 inch zipper. Uh, as long as it's longer than 11 inches, you should be in good shape. Um, I like these continuous zippers because I can use fun zipper pulls uh, to go with them. Um, I've actually ordered some shamrock zipper pulls uh, for my next Ireland project, um, so that should be really fun for, uh, for my next project. Now, what we need after we have our 12 inch zipper is we're going to cut out some fabrics. And we need an outer piece of fabric that measures 11 inches wide by 7 inches long and another outer piece of fabric that measures 11 inches wide by 2 inches long, and a final outer piece of fabric that measures 11 inches wide by 9 inches tall. And we're going to have lining pieces that measure exactly the same size. And in addition, we are going to use some fusible fleece that measures also exactly the same size. And I'll put these measurements in the description section of the video so you don't have to worry about them here. Now, once we have our fabrics, we, the first step we're going to take is we are going to add our zipper. I'm going to take my two inch piece by 11 inch piece of outer fabric and I'm going to place it right sides up on my workstation. But I need to make sure of something because my fabric is directional fabric. In other words, it goes in one direction. It's not all over. So I want to make sure that when my zipper is turned right sides out when I sew it, that my fabric is headed in the right direction. So I'm going to actually turn this right sides uh, upside down and I'm going to place my zipper right sides down on top of my outer fabric. Now I know that when I turn this this way that my fabric is going to be the right way around. I'm then going to take a piece of lining and I'm going to place it right sides down on top of my zipper. I'm just going to take a few pins. You can use clips if you like, but I'm just going to take a few pins here and pin this zipper through all the layers.
And if you're a beginner sewist, you may want to use more pins, or if you're a more advanced sewist, you may not want to use any pins at all. I'm just using a few here. Now I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch this zipper in place through all three layers. Here I am at the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch this zipper and I'm using my quarter inch foot rather than my zipper foot. Um, but you can use your zipper foot if, if you're more comfortable with that. Now you can see one half of my zipper is already stitched. I'm going to press this real quick and then I'm going to top stitch right along this edge so that we have a nice finish and our lining doesn't move around. So I've pressed my fabric and my zipper. Now I'm just going to top stitch. Now we have a nice top stitch on our zipper, so let's go over and add the other half of our zipper and we can move on to our next step. Here we are back at the workstation and we can see that our top part of our zipper is facing the way we want it. And now we need to add the bottom part of our zipper. And we're gonna do that exactly the same way. And I should say that I added, uh, I went ahead and fused the fleece to the wrong side of my outer fabric before we got started on this project um, so that you didn't have to see that part. So now I'm going to place this larger piece right sides up on my workstation and place my zipper right sides down on my workstation and then place the lining right sides down. And once again, I'm just going to stitch right across here and uh, the, exactly the same way that I did on the front side of my zipper. And then I'm, I'll be back and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, I've now stitched my zipper on and top stitched both sides of my zipper. Now I'm going to because I'm using a continuous zipper, I'm just going to even up both of my sides here and cut off the remainder of my zipper because I don't need that anymore. Now, if you're using a regular zipper, you're gonna to wanna to stitch along the zipper threads to make sure that they stay together. Um, otherwise, they will come apart. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your zipper pull is in the middle. Now I have a nice square or rectangular bag. The next thing I want to do is going to seem counterintuitive to you. I'm going to take my lining piece and my outer fabric piece that is the back of my bag and I'm going to put it, put the two fabric pieces together. I'm then going to place my 
front part of my bag so that the two lining pieces are right sides together and the back is on the back facing outwards. Now I have trimmed this bag a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and trim my outer bag to match. You may not have to do that, but um, I just want to make sure that my front and my back are in alignment. Now the next thing that we're going to do, which is going to seem odd to you because we are going to be using a French seam, is we are going to stitch around our bag using a one quarter inch seam allowance on the front side of our bag. And that would seem like we are going to have a raw edge on the outer part of our bag. But in reality, it's not going to look that way once we're finished. So let's head over to the sewing machine and let's stitch a one quarter inch seam allowance all the way around our bag on the right side of our bag. And then we can finish up our French seam and finish up this bag. Here we are back at the sewing machine and I am just going to stitch on the right sides of my bag one quarter inch. Okay, now we have finished stitching the outer part of our bag. So let's go over to the workstation and move on to our next step. Okay, now we have stitched all the way around our bag and I've gone ahead and clipped our corners. Now we need to turn our bag so that it is to the lining side. Now you could trim your seams if you want to on this, um, but you don't really need to. And now you can see we have no raw edges on the inside of our bag. I'm gonna use a chopstick here just to poke out my corners a little bit.
Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to stitch all the way around our bag again and that's going to enclose these raw edges that are in the front part of our bag and that's what creates our French seam. So we're going to head back over to the sewing machine and we're going to use this time a 3 8 inch seam allowance to enclose our raw edges on the front and to create a French seam on the inside of our bag. Here we are back at the sewing machine and I have my bag turned to the lining side. And I'm just going to stitch a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around my bag and it's going to enclose those raw edges on the front. Now, if you want, you can feel all the way along where that where that where those raw edges are. But the 3 8 inch seam should be plenty. So there we've created our French seam on the inside of our bag. So let's go over to the workstation and turn this bag right sides out. So here we are back at the workstation and we are simply going to turn our bag right sides out. And as you can see, there are no raw edges on the front anymore, and there are no raw edges on the inside. Now, a lot of times when people make these bags with the zippers in the front, they just leave the raw edges on the inside, but I don't really like that. And it's so easy to make these French seams that uh, it's worth taking a little extra time to do that. Now I'm just going to take my chopstick and poke out my corners a little bit. And I've used some fleece in this project, but you don't really need to if you don't want to. If you want uh, a bag that has a little less structure, you can just go ahead and not use the fleece, but I like how the fleece feels. Even though my corners aren't as crisp as I would like because of it, um, it's still a nice little bag. Now all we have to do is zip our bag closed, give it a nice press, and we have finished with our little zipper pouch with the zipper in the front with French seams. It's that simple. I hope you enjoyed this project today. It's a fun one and another beginner zipper pouch project here from So Very Crafty. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, ding that bell for notifications, and 
head over to the website at www.soverycrafty.com for more sewing and crafting tutorials that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. Plus, share this video with anybody who may want to make a little zipper pouch of their own. This one, like I said, is going to Ireland with me. It's a perfect little pouch for lots of little things. And the beauty of this pouch is you can make it any size you want. Just make sure that the back and the front have the same measurements once you add the zipper and you'll be ready to go. And use any fabric that you like. I like my little Ireland fabric because that's where I'm going on my trip. So it should be fun. So that's it for today. I will see you all next time here at So Very Crafty. Thank you and bye.